powerful collaborations, cutting edge science, and curious minds coming together for a glimpse of the future. Stay tuned as we look at the latest updates on some of the most promising technology projects. Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Peter Balland from Technicon. Safe for Rail 2 is a European project aimed at improving the safety and efficiency of the European railway system. The consortium is composed of eight industrial partners, including SMEs, large companies, one research institution, and one academic partner. Together, they provide expertise from the automotive, aerospace, and railway sector in order to create synergies with existing and emerging concepts and technologies. Today, we focus on Work Package 1 in Safer Rail 2, which addresses time-sensitive networks and drive-by data. Here to explain it all is Mohamed Abutair from project partner TT Tech in Vienna. Welcome, Mohamed, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks, thanks. So in Safe for Rail 2, you are leading um, Work Package 1, and Work Package 1 focuses on TSN-based drive-by data, and we'll discuss that in a minute. But first, tell us about your line of work, or in other words, what you do day to day. Yes, I am a, I am an aviation project manager uh, at TT Tech, focusing in the automotive and rail sectors. I am uh, currently leading several projects uh, and responsible to manage them uh, internally and also with their respective partners. Most of this project is a research project, is as innovation idea that we are focusing. One of them is the Safe Rail 2. Uh, we are focusing there to, to collaborate with uh, mainly with the OMs, uh, mainly CAF, Siemens, and Bombardier to provide them the hardware. And then if we uh, sort of zoom in a little bit back to Safer Rail 2, especially regarding TSN-based drive-by data, now, this is the focus of Work Package 1 in Safer Rail 2, but what is drive-by data and what does this mean in the domain of railway communications? And when we say TSN, we talk about time-sensitive networks. Maybe you could tell us just a bit about how that works as well. Actually, the drive-by data concept is invested in uh, in the safe rail projects is focusing for the for or is presented the train uh, on board data communication system um, in other words this is like uh, the ethernet train backbone as well as the ethernet uh, consist networks this both networks this is already we call it now by the drive by data um we using the, the time sensitive network of course uh, because it's a standard, a standard time trigger ethernet protocols why because it's reliable and uh, determines communication that means they they support uh, several domain and actually it's it's, sta it's stable as well in different domain for example like industrial automotive, oil space, and now we are trying to, to invest more in, in, in the direction of railway sectors, and hopefully that, that will be work. Uh, the time sensitive network uh, is, is forwarding the message actually in a predictable way, uh, with guarantee low latency and very low jitters during the data transfer, the transmission. Also, uh, also, the, the time sensitive network also, we have the ability to have a mixed security systems where we have like a safety safety data and non-safety critical data is in one network, both of them integrated in one network. So there's this concept of critical systems versus non-critical systems. And you're saying these are working together in, in the ideal wireless train situation. What are examples of each one of these systems, critical and non-critical? Yes, just I forget to mention this, the drive-by data is the wire communication. We are focusing about the Ethernet communications as example of the uh, mixed security mix communication, like uh, a safety critical function in the car, like car con uh, control unit signal, as well the doors, brake systems, and so on. This is all the, the, the critical application or the, uh, the critical communication signal is called safety. And non-safety, for example, like a, infotainment uh, data, video data, passenger data, something like that, that they exchange with the passenger itself, they will consider a non-critical data. That means if we have any delay for this data, will be no issue for, for that. 
But for example, if we have an, a breaking signal is delayed, that means this is danger and could be uh, we lost some people or make uh, make make like an unsuitable situation there. Okay, and if someone was to look at the website for Safer Rail 2, they would see that the project has three main objectives. One is to increase the accuracy of data management in the communication bus of the train. The second is to develop wireless solutions in order to remove the wiring of the internal communications of the train. And thirdly, to cut the development time of new applications for trains. Does Work Package 1 contribute to all of these goals, or is it more applicable to one of them? Actually, we are contributing in uh, two of them, focusing uh, first of the increasing the accuracy of the data management in the communication bus of the train. This is like our focus. How we contribute since we are uh, developing the drive-by data concept, where is the reliable and safe communication system is implemented. Then we are guaranteed here to, to have an accurate uh, data management in the communication system bus. This is like uh, how we, we can see it. As well, we contribute the, to the third one about cut the, the development time for a new application to, for the train because we enable for them because the applications, now we can move from the end device for one signal application to end device in, in, with multiple application that mean integrated application with multiple one this communication system enable this change of course as work package one we are not contributing to the end system device but we give the the ability for the uh, for the designer or for the in, in design implementation to to implement this these things or make the changes by using the our uh, communication systems Okay, so it's sort of um, your work is sort of spread out a little bit over the project. It's not necessarily so uh, laser focused on one particular point. In Safer Rail 2, are you developing any kind of demonstrator or some um, type of hardware or software? Yes, we are in the work package one. We are developing the prototype, uh, hardware prototype uh, um, for the communication network, for the ETVN and also for the Ethernet uh, consist network. We developed two switches, one for the ETVN for the Ethernet backbone and one for the for the consist network. Okay. And this we will provide it to the complementary project where it's called the OMS here. They in, they are already invited there and they will implement the demonstrator by using our hardware. And the complementary project is called Connecta. Connected to this is like the the complementary project that we are provide for them the hardware and we have like the use case completely the demonstrator together later on hopefully by then in, in, in June. Okay, so um, some of what you're doing spills over into Connecta too. It sounds like yes, we the target for for this uh, the whole story for the shift to rail to have like a, an open call with where we are fit for the Safer Rail 2 and other complementary project where the OAMs, they are involved. That means we receive the requirement, everything is from them. And we do develop the concept together and implemented the hardware for them. And they, they need to validate and uh, verify the concept by the demonstrator. Okay. And so uh, Safer Rail 2 is actually going to be uh, wrapping up pretty soon. Um, if you look back, can you identify any kind of challenges that you've encountered through the project? I mean, there's always seems to be something. Um, can you look at the project and say, yep, this is where we um, had a snag and this is um, how we overcame it? Yes, um, regarding to the issue with the, as our situation now with the COVID-19, we don't have like a physical connection. Um, unfortunately, the COVID-19 started with, uh, with the, the last, in, in the last phase of the implementation and restarting the phase of the testing, where we couldn't have like real, a real uh, meeting or workshop together with the, with the partner to make a, a testing for the, for the hardware, for, for our prototype and so on in, in real, in the physical workshop. This is, of course, delay a little bit of the, the, the testing phase, uh, but of course we overcome to this one with the, some virtual situation. Also now currently, since it's, the situation is go is still the same, we decide to chip the the hardware to one place, 
and the one partner they did um, the the testing by supporting online the others partners and in this situation we already like overcome this 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 situation for the, this uh, this capability but this has come to my our mind later on because first of all we we thought maybe we will overcome this issue very soon for, for covid 19 but unfortunately it's take long time hopefully that in in the future we will cover we will we will be able to have like a physical workshop okay and that's important because these physical workshops working hands on um face to face this is a really important part of the project so uh, yes, yes especially in the testing especially in the testing when we have the, the test and um, we need to integrate all the the, the components together and test it this is like yeah it's very important here well thanks for sharing a little bit about safer rail too um, it's an interesting project with a lot of promise and you're doing work that is going to affect the railway sector for a long long way down the road so thanks for all your efforts with that and for giving us some information about how this project works. Thanks, thanks a lot. This podcast has been brought to you by Technicon. This project has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program under grant agreement number 826073. The information and views set out in this program are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the official opinion of the Shift to Rail joint undertaking. The joint undertaking does not guarantee the accuracy of the data included in this episode. Neither the joint undertaking nor any person acting on the joint undertaking's behalf may be held responsible for the use which may be made of the information contained herein.